Hi, Tile at Big Sound 2015 on the second day here with Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. And uh, Jonathan has just spent the day with us, and uh, we're going to talk to him a little bit about uh, what the day was like. So, first of all, how was your structured blind listening test this morning? Well, it was, it was a pretty humbling experience, really. Um, I I thought I would have done a bit better than, than I did, but I, f I feel like I learned quite a bit of just about maybe how to listen and, um, you know, hopefully I got a little bit better as the, the day went on, at least, um, you know, in the future, maybe I know how to approach it a little bit better. But, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience. And, and um, it, it's, it's not just that the listening is hard. But there's also these sort of mental aspects that come in. Yeah, yeah, it's um, you know it it's hard to separate whether what you're hearing is is your imagination or what you're expecting to hear something, uh, and uh, you're just uh, you just keep um, I can't think of the word now, but um, yeah, you you uh, <laughs> second guessing yeah, yourself second guessing and yourself. all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff. Sure. It was funny, uh, I, d I was um, just looking at um, some of the comments from some of my earlier Big Sound posts and uh, Sean Olive, uh, the researcher at um, Harmon Labs mm -hmm. who was doing all the headphone testing recently, um, he mentioned in there that um, their experience was that 20 to 30 minutes of, of blind testing is about all that anybody can take before the fatigue starts to set in and errors set in. So it's it's that um, fatiguing that 20 minutes is is kind of the the normal limit for what people can do with a fresh uh, mind. Yeah. Even, even when they're experienced. You well, know, and I, I found it 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 actually got harder. You know, the the more you get into it, it, it seems like um, maybe you know when when your ears are fresh. Maybe it's um, you're picking up a little bit more, but yeah. then uh, you just listen to the to the same thing, and uh, you you kind of confuse yourself. <laughs> At least I did. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very difficult. And good job, good job. He did he did get a number of times. He got all three right. And then there was a number of times when he didn't. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it was a good job. Great effort on that. And then uh, um, and then you got a chance to just uh, walk around the room and uh, listen to all the various headphones at a, time, at a time. Let's stand up and we'll go one by one through the bunch. So okay. the Enigma Acoustics. Yeah, so um, they uh, it seemed to have a lot of presence in the uh, upper mid-range, uh, lower treble. Um, maybe, you know, it, it would work with cer uh, certain recordings possibly more than, than others, but, um, but yeah, um, they kind of differed a little bit more from the other headphones in the group, I, I felt. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, and then um, as, as far as these, the... Uh, ethers? The, the ethers, yeah. Um, really good uh, tonal balance, I, I felt. Um, maybe, you know, compared to some of the really uh, higher-end headphones, it might, might have been lacking just a tiny bit in detail to, to my ears, but... Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's a good tonal balance, um, and so yeah, I thought it was good. Good headphone. Cool. Um, LCD threes. LCD threes. Um, they just seem to have. Um, they're very dynamic. They have a, a real sharp high treble, um, and kind of, um, kind of. I felt a little bit unbalanced in in the treble in in some ways, but just real hard hitting bass. Um, Probably really good for um, certain genres of, of music, maybe more like rock or, or other things where you really want some hard hitting uh, sound. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it definitely you know have their place for sure. And um, then the, uh, the HE, the Hi-Fi Man HE One Thousand. Yeah, so these I I really liked. Um, they just had just this smooth sound. Um, just I I just think they're just just creamy the way they they sounded um yeah just very pleasing just didn't do anything harsh um but probably real easy to enjoy on um just a variety of music um yeah so yeah definitely not fatiguing 
So, yeah. But yeah, good detailed sound at the same time. So yeah, I, I really like those. Okay. Um, and then the uh, venerable HE or an HC eight hundred. Yeah. So they they have the just this spacious quality about them. Um, just a just a natural quality that um, just don't seem to sound like like headphones. It may be um, less intimate in some ways as far as the sound staging, but um, but uh, just really good. Maybe um, I I think I mentioned to Tile earlier, I'd, I'd really like these headphones if they could have the base of the H1000s <laughs> and, and I think that would be the just the best combination. Um, but yeah, a lot of reasons to, to really like the HD800s. Cool. And then um, the two Stax headphones? Yeah, so the um, I felt the, the 009s um, just a little bit um, more detailed even than the HD800s. Mm -hmm. um, maybe lacking a little bit in the spacious quality of the HD800s, but, um, but yeah, just, I, I'm hearing some things in the way upper treble that just sound really nice and clean and clear that maybe I, I didn't notice before with the HD800. So, um, yeah, really good uh, headphone for sure. And the, maybe, maybe my favorites. Maybe the, the favorites of the bunch. Yeah. And the 007? Yeah, so, um, a little bit uh, warmer sound, a little bit um, uh, par compared to the 009s, but um, also very detailed, I thought, as uh -huh. well, mm -hmm. but uh, not quite to that same level. Right. Um, so. Cool. So, yeah. And then the uh, Audio Zenith PMX2 um, headphone here. Yeah, good, um, good punchy, I thought, um, uh, maybe mid-bass. Um, and uh, maybe a, a little bit more of a mid-range tone I felt to to these, but right. um, yeah, it's it's a it's a good sounding headphone for sure, um, but uh, maybe not as as balanced tonally at least to my preferences as as some of the others. How about the comparing them to the sense of speed and air of the HD eight hundreds or the SR O nines? Um, I mean. It's it's hard to say dynamically. I they were um, I think maybe more dynamic uh, just because of the planar driver. Uh huh. Um, possibly just that uh, that punchy sound, um, but um, maybe just not as as even. Uh huh. Um, and so um, you know maybe I'm I'm hearing a little bit less detail in in certain frequency ranges. Okay. Um, probably in the. Um, I think the the upper mid range maybe takes away a little bit um, from just the the clarity of the of vocals maybe. Okay, and last uh, but not least, the very unusual um, uh, Abyss headphones. Yeah, so these these really stand out. Um, just they they have a few qualities that uh, I wouldn't think would go together on a headphone that. The real low sub bass um, is is, uh, is just really hard hitting and, and stands out. And you um, you said explosive before, yeah, and I it, love I, that I word. I would say explosive, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it, it kind of catches you off guard. Because uh, in in some tracks, you know, the the sound is pretty uh, normal, even keel, and then maybe you'll just hear just this um, just this real low sub bass that that just kind of explodes and uh, comes out of nowhere and kind of surprises you and um, but otherwise the the bass seems uh, fairly normal but just this really um, surprising dynamic uh, sub bass that it has and and but at the same time it has kind of an airy uh, quality of, I thought uh, about the um, uh, just the upper mid-range um, vocals maybe I thought kind of sounded um, maybe thin in comparison to um, something like the HE-1000s or the, uh, the LCD-3s. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of an unusual combination of characteristics, I thought. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, interesting for sure. Cool. Yeah. And, and I know uh, this morning um, it was uh, difficult uh, testing the amps and stuff like that, but you did play around with some of the amps, and, and you did... Uh, um, have a, uh, an impression of well, one of the, at least one of the amps that uh, you talked about. Why don't you tell me about your impression of the amplifiers? Well, um, 
you know, the, with with the amps, I I felt like it was hard to really pick um, a lot of times ones that stood out. Um, maybe the the Burson with the LCD threes, it seemed to complement their sound. Um, uh, it seems like the LCD threes have a little bit of harshness um, and the way high uh, treble um, that. It seems like the the Burson maybe smooths over a little bit, and it it does some nice things with with the bass on that headphone to kind of complement it. Uh huh. Um, so I I kind of like that setup. Um, that seemed to stand out. On on a lot of the other headphones, I I really um, didn't really hear as as much differences as I would have thought, but. The, the Ragnarok, um, I, I kept on kind of going towards that as far as maybe just a little hints at more clarity in different spots. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it seemed like I, I just, I kept going back to, to that amplifier. And, and I was thinking, you know, it, and it could be just the synergy that it has with, with the DAC as well. Um, since they're kind of meant to uh, to be a good match, um, that could definitely be part of it. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, all the other amps, of course, they just sounded amazing. Um, but uh, I I couldn't really get a lot of times uh, one amplifier to stand out right. a lot more than than some of the others. Yeah, the the tr the truth is is that this is a lot of very good gear and. <laughs> And stuff sounds very good on it for the most part. Um, how about a little uh, quick uh, let us know what you have at home for gear? What's your home rig? Well, I have uh, a pair of HD 800s um, and uh, just a pretty modest setup. Um, I have an O2 amp that, that I built myself and that cool. was kind of a fun little project. Sure. And, um, and the objective DAC uh, to go along with it. Um, and also have a, a Valley that uh, that sounds uh, it, it seems you have you have a little bit of the the tube sound sure um, just a little bit um, uh, it, kind of more of a natural sound as a, as opposed to the uh, the O two the O two amp uh -huh. yeah so sure. um, yeah so I kind of like that combination for now um, and yeah maybe uh, try a few different uh, setups in the future but, cool. Uh, yeah. Well, take your time. No hurry. Yeah. Um, go to meets and stuff, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, get a chance to say that. And uh, I'm, I'm super glad to have had you here today. Yeah. Well, it's been I'm, fun. I feel really fortunate to be able to hear all this amazing gear, and uh, and for Tiles' uh, generosity and, and patience as well with. Uh, with the blind testing, especially. Well, it, it so, was a, it was yeah. it's a pleasure, mate, I, and I and thank you for um, giving it a shot, and because it's it's not easy, it's a rather stressful thing. <laughs> All right, so another day, at Big Sound 2015, and uh, Jonathan's done for the day. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, that means I'm done for the day too. And we'll see you guys uh, sometime over the weekend. Bob Katz is next up, coming in on Saturday morning. And boy, that's going to be fun. We're going to do the structured listening and uh, regular tests on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I turn the room over to Bob and his um, machinations. Evidently, we, we, we talked for about two hours on the phone today, and he's bringing up all sorts of gizmos and gadgets. So... Uh, uh, Sunday is going to be quite an affair in here, and I'll make sure I record it all for you guys to see what uh, the wonderful Bob Katz does with uh, a room full of gear like this. Till then, we'll see you next time.